because I'm using models that, let's face it, aren't brand new, but they serve the purpose of uh, convincing you to use depth in your shots, in your films, your videos. Our world is a three-dimensional world, and these models help emphasize that depth we need. This is John Hart, and this is our second in our film studies series on composing the frame. Notice that our friend Denise is a little off-center to the left. We're also going to talk about scale, force perspective, and depth of field. To repeat, this is about forced perspective and depth of field. Now, our young lady here, courtesy of the Metropolitan Museum of Art, if she's talking to us in the foreground, and even more of a close-up, hello, and that's her village in the back. There it is. That's forcing the perspective. But it looks like it's the same size as my cat in the foreground. Hello? Pinto, what are you doing up there? I want to mention here that the cat was a happy accident. He was completely out of scale for our village. Very obviously. Now here's our Denise again in a close-up, but if we pull back, we see that she's out of scale for our village composite here. We don't notice her there so much. Here's our cow again in proper uh, size and shape and in scale to the rest of the animals. See the smaller sheep back there? It's again forced perspective. Thank you for dealing with my Jean-Luc Godard handheld HD camcorder. Well, he didn't use one, but it gave me more flexibility. But there's our little girl. Now, let's take Denise again and bring her back into proper scale in the foreground. There she is. And there's her village. Looks big in the background. What's that spot on her forehead? Trip to India? Thank you, Denise. Again. Let's move on. Thank you. Now look what you've done. There he is. We'll get him later. Ah, that's our other village we're going to talk about. Back to our car. We forced the perspective by putting a smaller sized car behind him. But we assume from this angle that that smaller car is the same size as the car, the blue car in the foreground. Put even the larger car in the foreground. Again, we're going to assume that those cars in the background are the that same car's size. In trouble. There again, the car in the background, we assume, is the same size. Oh, hi, Denise, again. Oh, she wants to look away. But she also wants to turn and look at the village she lives in. And with her in the foreground, we assume, again, those are uh, homes that uh, she could walk in the front door uh, to. Now, if we zoom in closer... We have a gendarme there in the foreground, a policeman in the background, figures receding into the background, especially the, the cars. And again, we're going to assume that the cars in the foreground are the same size as the cars in the background, that the cars in the background are the same size as the foreground. However, they are smaller. The same thing with our buildings. The buildings behind the building in the foreground, we assume from visual experience in our three-dimensional lives that buildings in the foreground are uh, larger, of course, than the buildings in the background. The buildings in the background could be exactly the same size. 
although they recede. And our one point perspective I'm just going to zoom up quickly to our tower just for visual interest. Again, if we move down here, you'll see that the lineup I've made, those are smaller cars. But in force perspective, we assume again from the low angle that that car in the background, the red one, is the same size as the car in the foreground. And that the houses in the background are as large as those in the foreground. Thank her again. I guess she's gone home. Here she is. Say goodbye, Denise. Thank you. One more experiment here. We have our bicyclists here moving right along kind of fast. We're focused on them. So our depth of field is going to be more shallow in the background and out of focus. Also, we, we're zooming by our village a little higher angle, keeping them in focus. Our village is slightly out of focus. Now, if we want to increase depth of field, well, especially if we're shooting outside, the brighter the day, the greater the depth of field will be. Here's our, our friends again. Foreground, middle ground, middle ground, background. All in pretty sharp focus because I've got a very bright light on all of them. So that increases my depth of field. If you use a wide angle lens, you'll get better depth of field. But it's just a question of focusing on what you want to focus on. Are we focusing on this, this boy? Then he's in focus. Or are we going to focus on our gendarme there in the foreground? Question of focus. Here we've got gold. Our, there goes our bicyclists again. Nice blurred background. Action is the key. Keep moving. And don't 